Hello, I'm Reverend Tiffer. Uh, I'm the uh, Rector of Brettles and Hitch and Brettenham in Thought Marie. Uh, I'm very pleased to have been asked to do the talk for this week. Uh, well, as you uh, uh, may have just heard uh, from Amy telling the story about Daniel, uh, we have here uh, a, 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 quite a familiar story in some ways. Writing on the wall is a phrase, an idiom we use in normal language that tends to be, we tend to say the writing was on the wall, meaning uh, we knew it was going to happen all along, or something was obvious to us. Uh, but in the case of the actual story, the uh, writing on the wall was, uh, um, was not obvious to Belshazzar, who didn't realise uh, that he was in trouble uh, and that God was going to uh, end his life, really, because of his greed and his uh, gluttony. He was, uh, uh, he was not going to be a good king. And uh, that's a very sad message for him. But uh, uh, he was following Nebuchadnezzar, who had been uh, uh, quite an evil king, but had over time come to realise that the Israelites themselves were people who followed a God who was real and who was true, and here he's been replaced by a king who is not, uh, who is not good. Uh, now this story reminds us of a couple of things. Uh, one is that we mustn't miss uh, who it is that says, "Go and get Daniel." It's the queen or the queen mother, probably. Uh, so uh, 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 it would have been Nebuchadnezzar's wife, perhaps, who remembered her husband relying on Daniel so much to interpret his dreams and to use his wisdom that God had given him. Uh, and uh, because of her, because of her wisdom, they're able to find out what the writing is about. Uh, but it also reminds us that God is uh, the God of, uh, of everyone, that uh, this was a people, the Babylonian people, the Babylonian kings, did not worship God usually. Occasionally Nebuchadnezzar decided to worship him for a bit, but he, they, they worshipped their own gods. Uh, they were not the Israelite chosen people of God. And yet God is saying, I'm still their God. Uh, I'm still Lord over uh, the Babylonians and their kings. Uh, now, um, I think that when we look around the world today, there's lots of very um, uh, difficult situations, lots of leaders who are who are greedy and who are who are, who are um, uh, using their power for evil. Uh, and I wonder what God would say to them. I wonder what God say would say to us in the way that we use what we have been given uh, and uh, the way that we we live as well. Uh, we're going to, uh, but, but also we are part of that is that we can give thanks that we have a God who is king over all and that when we think about the difficult things that happen in our lives and certainly in 2020 it can feel like you know what's going to happen next uh, we can think back to the situation of the Israelites of Daniel uh, who had been taken into exile uh, and never got to go back as far as we know to his, uh, uh, to his home uh, in, uh, in Israel uh, lived in captivity and slavery all his life, even though he's given this very high honour of being the third most powerful ruler in the kingdom. Uh, and yet it must have felt to him and his friends that uh, everything was going wrong. They were taken into captivity, their home, uh, their home had been plundered and destroyed, and now uh, uh, the king who they'd got a good relationship with and who had uh, given them a high status dies, and along comes a worse king, it must have felt like things were just getting worse and worse. And yet even amongst that, God showed that God was still there, was still God, and was still in control. And I think that can give us comfort as well, uh, that even through what we have to deal with in our lives, uh, God is still there, is still in control. Now, uh, you may have brought with you something purple uh, and some jewellery, or perhaps something to draw. Uh, something purple uh, or a purple robe, purple clothes uh, and uh, a, a gold chain because they're the things that Daniel was given as signs of his office as the third most important person in the land. And in the same way you, uh, if you follow God and you seek to do what he wants you to do, you can also be like Daniel uh, and you can be someone who brings God's message and God's truth to people uh, wherever they are uh, and be someone who is seen by God. As, uh, uh, as, as worthy of a gold chain and a purple robe uh, because of the task that he gives you to do. So either make one or draw one if you can, uh, or just have if you've got some jewellery uh, uh, that uh, you've plundered from your parents' uh, room or something with uh, something purple to remember that. Uh, but we're also going to remember the Queen Mother who knew who it was to turn to uh, to answer this question. Uh, and to solve the problem. And I wonder if you have someone in your life, particularly someone who might be a Christian, 
uh, who is uh, someone who tells you about God. Uh, if uh, you can think of someone who you would turn to uh, when you needed help, when you needed some wisdom or some divine uh, inspiration or guidance, perhaps your parents, perhaps a godparent, perhaps your vicar or a neighbour or someone from church, whoever it might be, to think about who those people might be uh, and, uh, uh, and, and remember them. Thank you very much.